if you want to get better at fantasy football, today's episode is perfect for you because we're looking at a lot of a lot of different teams, deep diving on the Jets and that. But we actually cover a lot of strategy of what to do in the first round. Where should you take Travis Kelsey? How do you think about the guy you like versus the average draft position of that first round? And what should you do to set yourself up for success? I think you'll enjoy it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, turn on the notifications so that you are always prepared to win in fantasy football. Enjoy the show. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped has just taken off not only. Andy, in the United States of America, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. Join Makes the... sense. People live everywhere. <laughs> yes, we are, and we all need to Manscaped. Join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, and right now, Manscaped.com, you can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code FOOTBALLERS. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Another day, another download. Of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Back with you Wednesday, August 4th. The time draws near. For the ball to be kicked up into the air. Yes, for tomorrow. Oh my gosh, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Guys, I'm in. What's Football. The, uh, let's I, see how in you are. What's the matchup tomorrow? Oh, oh yeah. brother. Cowboys? Uh-huh. Against their opponent. Yes. <laughs> um, what team do Arizona Cardinal fans still despise? Oh, man. There's a lot of them. The, the, well, I mean, what still is the, the keyword? Still despise. Why don't you just tell me what movie you're looking for? <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Holmes didn't get his second foot down. Oh, you keep saying that. Um, well, Jason's just a... Man who shares truth, right, and photographs. Oh, yeah, th th that's the best part of it is the, the one, one photograph. Uh, buy or sell on the show today. NFL news to talk about. We've got mailbag questions. Uh, we've got Judge Giamatti in the house. Hello. Oh yeah, running the ship over there. How you doing, Judge? Oh, I'm great. I feel what? like we haven't talked to you enough lately. I'm um, loving these morning shows. Oh, okay. Is that because like it's not hanging over you for the whole day? Like when we record in the afternoons during the off season. Honestly, it's a, more of a weird thing when I go to sleep. I hate that the episode is going to publish when I'm not awake. Oh, mm. well, you want to watch over it like a like very a mama bird. Very yeah. controlling. Like to know that it all went smoothly. <laughs> when you have Brooks level money, you need to make yes. sure everything is on schedule. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm glad we r rotated back around to his incredible wealth. <laughs> Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers right now is the time. I mean, the, the season's about to begin. Fantasy drafts are about to happen. Make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast, wherever you listen, whether that's Spotify, you can follow there, follow on Apple podcast. Uh, if you like to watch the show, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers, subscribe, click the bell. Um, always good to get, uh, notified when a new episode pops uh each and every day thanks to brooks or our our live streams you know that those are the unscheduled things that we we're going to be popping on through august and if you want to know when we're there just make sure you've got those notifications on all right let's kick this off buy or sell presented by pristine auction buy or sell Jets rookie wide receiver. Oh, yes. Camp headline maker, Elijah Moore. 60 receptions. Buy or sell. 60 or more receptions in 2021. Very timely. Uh, I'll start because I had recently looked at my uh, Jets statistics, and I have Elijah Moore down for 68 
receptions. Wow. I think he is uh, going to certainly win the job of the starting uh, outside receiver. And I also think he's fantastic. I just think when you look at the most talented wide receivers coming in, obviously Jamar Chase gets all the hype. Rashad Bateman's gotten a lot of love. I feel like Elijah Moore, outside of New York, has been a little bit more forgotten. And maybe it's because of the quarterback it, situation. It's there. not been forgotten 100%. if you're on Twitter. No, it is. Jason's dead on. It's because of the rookie, Zach Wilson. It's because of the, the team being rebuilt. I just looked at my projections. I have Elijah Moore with 59 receptions. Oh, sell. So uh, you hate Elijah Moore. The second most receiving yards on the Jets and tied for the most touchdowns. Wow, you're giving him the second most. Yes. He has the second most for me as well. Yeah, 59 for 714 and 5 is where I'm at right now. I think you're a year away from being uh, extremely pleased with your dynasty pick of Elijah Moore. I do think that there's the potential you have a back half of year, uh, maybe like A.J. Brown's rookie season, but a little little lighter than that. Uh, I think the opportunity is there, obviously. And if mm -hmm. Zach Wilson does show some stuff in his rookie season, which Joe Burrow did, which Justin Herbert did, obviously the pedigree is there, then Elijah Moore will beat this number. Yeah, and, and the reason I think that this number is set here is because over the last decade, there's been 24 times where a rookie's hit 60-plus, and all but two of them were top 36 wide receivers. So it's a really good barometer. Now, in my stats, he's not there. He's my wide receiver 45 because the touchdowns I don't think are going to come from the rookie quarterback. Uh, but, Mike, where do you weigh in? I am an easy sell despite my uh, adoring of of the player Elijah Moore I'm with Andy that I think by next year for Dynasty like he would once we hit the off season for the 2022 season he's going to be the hotness that people are talking about on Dino Twitter but having said that with all of the fluff pieces coming out on Twitter don't overlook that it's well Corey Davis and Jamison Crowder are locked in everyone's getting hot and bothered by Elijah Moore while he fights to be the wide receiver three on the team. I think he's the clear-cut wide receiver two on the team. See, I, I would Jamison strongly Crowder, disagree. Jamison Crowder will be in the slot. Elijah Moore will be – he's playing with the first-team offense now, which is probably well, – he's fighting. He, he's fighting for that job against Keelan Cole. Correct. Uh, and also, Denzel Mims has been buried <laughs> that six was, feet deep. Oh, man, second-round pick last year, Denzel Mims Yeah, I mean, you, done. You, you can't keep talent off the field. Jamison Crowder is uh, – He's tried, true, reliable, he, and a and a blanket for, uh, you know, Zach Wilson, security blanket. But I do think that over the second half of the year, Elijah Moore will be clearly the, the second or the first target on the team. That's and, where I'm at with it. And I, I have – so I'm selling that. I've got him down for right around the 40 completion range. Uh, I don't think he makes a fantasy impact. He'll have that in week one. <laughs> well, <laughs> according to Twitter, yes. he will. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see him having a fantasy impact this year. That with with Corey Davis, the big acquisition. Who Corey Davis is a is a one ish. He's a one ish type of wide receiver. And yeah, it, and you it, get to face the Dolphins defense twice, the Patriots defense twice, and the Bills defense twice. Yes. So six games that I'm not ex like I wouldn't be excited even if Elijah Moore was flashing to throw him out there yeah he really is a name to monitor a name to know not necessarily a name to draft because uh, e even if he has a, a, a good solid rookie season not outlandishly great but just a really solid introduction into his NFL career it's usually coming in the back half of the season. So it's not someone that you're going to be happy you drafted on draft day because week one, week two, week three, he is still a rookie. I think he'll get off to a slower start, but certainly someone you need to be aware of because he's electric. Andy, would you go Elijah Moore or Terrace Marshall from the Carolina Panthers? Uh, rookie versus rookie. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I wonder how close I have them in my, say, in my, in my stats. And you, um, that's – Believing in Sam Darnold and a rookie with two established I would go Elijah Moore. Or the rookie-to-rookie -rookie combination. Yeah, I would go Elijah Moore because I don't – as much as I love Terrence Marshall, the player, he should be fourth in total receptions or fifth on that team simply because of what you said. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Christian McCaffrey, right. Dan Arnold. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, go with, I'll go with Elijah Moore. Getting a shout-out. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 that was very kind. I was trying that I mean, on. Lo- like you, you just trying made a bunch of size. really good players, and then you just threw Dan and Arnold. Dan Arnold. They, they Don't what? forget about the postman, Dan out, Arnold. They went out and paid him. They did. They, they paid a lot of money. I money. do. I do agree and with you. He's only a pa- he can't block. Not at all. Um, I. There it is. Thank you. Um, I do agree with you that he's going to be very involved. It's just funny yes. to hear the, you know, Christian. DJ, Mc- DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, outside of wide receivers, you've got Christian McCaffrey and, and Dan Arnold. So let's go. <laughs> all right. If only uh, preseason excitement correlated with production at all times for fantasy, that would be something special. Uh, that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. You can use the code BALLERS over there at pristineauction.com and get a $10 credit towards some sweet sports memorabilia. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Alarms were sounded yesterday when Matthew Stafford, quarterback for the Rams, left the practice field with a right thumb contusion. We were worried that maybe it was a Reaggravation of an injury that's kept him off the field in previous seasons. But Matthew Betts, our injury expert, as well as eyeballs, seeing him out as on the well, practice field today. As well as Matthew Stafford. Yeah. Right. If he's back on the field not concerned. practicing in full, then there's nothing to be that's worried about. Great news. Also, an update from yesterday's show. The early word on Kenny Galladay's hamstring injury is that it is not considered significant, but you got to watch those camp strings. Yes. Malarkey. Yoo-hoo-hoo. Of course it's not. I mean, not significant means he has not torn it and he's not out half the season but it is to me a significant fantasy football injury because it's one of those we, we see it year after year after year after year these camp strings um they, they come back well, uh, we'll see i mean like are, are you worried now or are you going to be worried in two weeks because like i'm not worried now because if he's back out on the practice field in a week yeah, no, I'm I'm worried that it, it crops up again over the next month. But the question, so you're will not. It, will it change the way you draft him? That's yes. what I say. If you're not worried right now and you're in a best ball draft, are you are you taking Kenny Galladay at the ADP? Or are you going? Ah. No, if I'm drafting today, I will consider the injury. So then you're. Well, that, that's a mild concern right yes, now. Yes, that's fair. That's fair to say. I I'm looking at it as. Uh, assuming I'm in the back half of August drafts, I'm going to take three or four more days before I yeah, bury okay. him in my rankings or something. But I I get it and. Look, if it is significant, who's catching the ball in New York? I mean, that's well, going to be a catching TBD, but getting the targets is Evan Ingram. Okay. That's who you go with? Yeah. Over Sterling Shepard? Yes. Hmm. Over Saquon? Uh, Saquon will get his targets, but the, the, the target leader of last year, yes, will continue to get targets. Dak Prescott has, quotes taken a step back in his return from a shoulder strain. This worries me. Boo! Mike McCarthy says we're being more conservative with the timetable now. He won't throw today. He won't obviously play in the Hall of Fame game. He wasn't going to do that The team is trying to avoid it becoming, quote, something bigger. Weren't you surprised when he was back on the field? Like, ironically, like, I'm a little surprised that Matthew Stafford is back in full the day after it, it, it was how I felt when Dak was like just back. It's like, oh, he pulled his thing. It's no problem. It should be a Whoa, couple. Nelly. <laughs> yeah. Never, Whoa, Nelly. Never, never like gave it a tug. And, uh, oh no! Come on. And <laughs> where's that alarm? <laughs> I know. Uh, there it is. And when he was back on the field so quickly, it was like, oh, good. There's nothing wrong because there's no way they would jeopardize. Like, there's no way they would put him back on the field too quickly. Uh, but they did. Uh, you said some stuff there. Yeah, I, didn't I didn't really didn't really grab it all. Um, Tyreek Hill <laughs> <laughs> missed practice with tendonitis, knee tendonitis, according to head coach Andy Reid. And this is worth monitoring. Is it? Yes, if it actually is knee tendonitis. That that was what Andy. That was uh, the coach Andy Reid said it was knee tendonitis. Maybe it is. Maybe it was just a sore knee. But if it truly is knee tendonitis, this is something to pay attention to i am not worried jason I, i'm not worried either if this was like a medical report coming out about a degenerative situation but i think what andy reed says like i talk about my tendonitis from time to time you know yeah. like my achilles is you're very like feel courageous like I'm, I'm dealing thank you i feel like i'm dealing with like tendonitis i don't know if i've got tendonitis i just use that word so i feel like <laughs> me and andy reed have a lot in common and that's the point if if he is wrong and just throwing out a word, then it's fine. A tendonitis is not a significant issue. Uh, 
Okay. I mean, at least when I've had fake tendonitis. Right. Yeah, I mean, my tendonitis has never stopped me from getting <laughs> we, out We there. can all agree that fake tendonitis. If you get 11 tonitis, is, is that's the, when it gets oh, no. real bad. Oh, no. Right, dads? Yes. <laughs> right, dads out there? Uh, Frank Reich said Quentin Nelson's going to miss significant time. This is this is mind-blowing. Uh, you know, he's an all-pro guard for the Indianapolis Colts. Carson Wentz just went down with the same injury. The same exact injury. I mean, you want to talk about having your quarterbacks back? You know, it's, it's like, I got you, Carson. I'm I'm coming along with you. I'm going to break the same bone in my foot. <laughs> Took a hammer and a chisel to my foot. So they're both 5 to 12 weeks. If you listen to Quentin Nelson, he will be there in five if, if you listen to his comments on it, uh, which were, I mean, he. It will be funny to see, like, Quentin Nelson oh, get back in gosh. five and Wentz get back in 12. But Jonathan Taylor is taking a hit in the rankings right now. I mean, losing Quentin Nelson to start the year, losing your quarterback to start the year. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's down my rankings considering I was the highest. At one point, he was number four this offseason for me. But I think he belongs even behind the Aaron Jones right now. Would oh, yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, he's he's actually outside of my – he's my running back 13 as of this moment. Which wow, is you put him down that The far? lowest he's been, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I still think he's fantastic. He's he's great. Uh, you know, running back thirteen is is not a, a scrub by any means, but when you lose your quarterback and lose your the the best offensive lineman in the league, uh, I think it's going to have an effect on the offense. Philip Rivers, P. River says he is going to stay ready. He has not shut down the uh, shut the door and returning to the NFL. Jason, this is exciting news for you personally. Look, the P. River's not dried up completely. No. Um, uh, Philip is out there ready to, ready to stream again. Do you think he could play approximately five to 12 weeks for the Indianapolis Colts? It's this funny. Year? That's what I thought too. Like the, the timeline doesn't work. Cause he, he's focused on his coaching right now. Yeah. Um, so that's why he's like later in the year, he's willing to come back, but it is ironic that it's like the Colts could use you just for, you know, a little bit. All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by sleeper. The very best place to host your league. And uh, I love Sleeper because it gets you connected with your league mates. And that is something we've talked about on the show for a long time. Like communication. Yes, great communication on the platform plus alerts and, and just always updating. They, they're, they're a great place to play your fantasy league. All right. Without further ado, let's jump into the mailbag. Mike, uh, <coughs> primed up over there? Of course. Mailbag. Mailbag. Uh, it's been a while since you haven't had a flourish at the end of your mailbag. Well, we did. We had uh, the most sensational mailbag of mm. all time. You you were off gallivanting around yes, uh, for the anniversary, the lake. Yeah, and Jason and I nailed pitch perfect. Nailed a very glam rock '80s harmony. On the mail, and we said we hadn't practiced, but we've been years, years working on this. Every Wednesday, well, Jason, you're not supposed to reveal in that in the garage. Every Wednesday, you go over there to practice the mailbag. That's right. We do play we, a little rock band. We don't have that all, that clip, do we? Not ready. I mean, it uh, exists. It's, uh, yeah, it's out there on the socials. I haven't heard it, so well, I've got to tune in. Thank you for supporting the show. <laughs> I was gallivanting. <laughs> Uh, visit the website if you have a question for us. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Apparently, though, if you dial the voicemail hotline and you mess up, you might still make the air. Uh, so be careful. Bro <laughs> Brooks is willing and able to embarrass you publicly. 302-464-TFFB. Uh, All right. Let's begin with the voicemail. Hey, ballers, I've got a draft coming up this Saturday, and I was wondering who I should take on a late-round flyer. A.J. Dillon, Zach Moss, or Naheem Hines? Thanks. Interesting. I think all three – I think you could make an argument for why each one of those guys should be the first one taken. The, but the, the guy that what I was will – the first name? A.J. Dillon. Dillon, okay. Uh, A.J. Villain, Zach Moss, or Naheem Hines? Um. I will personally take Naeem Hines out first. Even though he was fantastic last year, he's a great pass catching back. With the the problems that we see with, you know, uh, we just talked about Jonathan Taylor moving him down the offensive line. Let me and jump the fact in here that, real quick, yeah. though. Offensive line problems, 
Yeah, actually move uh, him up. Jacob Eason as the quarterback, who is athletically uh, very immobile. I mean, when you go look at his profile, he is a statue quarterback. That is a Philip Rivers archetype. That could lead to more dump offs. I, I agree that he's still going to get volume of passing. In a PPR league, he's someone you could plug in in a pinch. But the upside that we saw last year with touchdowns, and he, he was really great for fantasy. I don't think that's going to happen while the offense is I, I think we all say Jacob Eason is worse for the offense. The yes, the loss of Quentin Nelson is worse. So whereas the Buffalo Bills offense, the Green Bay Packers offense, those are outstanding. So many touchdowns to be had. And that's kind of where I'm going here is I'm looking at the touchdowns. So to me it would lean towards AJ Dillon <sighs> getting more work, being involved in the goal line. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I think it's the easiest way to pick up fantasy points is through the passing game. And so for running backs that are sharing a backfield, I will lean Hines right now. Mike? I will go with A.J. Dillon. The, oh, I was uh, hoping you took Zach Moss and we no. gave no help. Oh, yeah. Not only is that one of the best drops that we have. Which is uh, the only reason you made the pick. Yeah, tr truly. But like the upside of Zach Moss, so all of these players need something to happen in their favor, except... Zach Moss, it's not a running back who is front of, in front of Zach Moss. It's his quarterback. <laughs> like if it's For A.J. Dillon, if Aaron Jones misses time, A.J. Dillon gets a massive upgrade on top of I believe that the team will use him, and you could start him at, uh, in a pinch at the flex. Naeem Hines is there too, but if Jonathan Taylor misses time, then Hines doesn't skyrocket to me. He gets a, an upgrade, and Zach Moss doesn't have that option in front of him now there is out of buffalo there is some hype people are more excited for zach moss as uh he was starting to get more integrated in the offense at the end of the year and then he got hurt so we, we don't know what the real upside he is for zach moss in that uh offense but i'm taking my late round you're shooting for the stars so i'll go with aj Dillon. i have moss uh one spot ahead of heinz right now and i have moss with Eight touchdowns on the ground in wow. Buffalo, which is the, Ooh, cr the cr how many rushing touchdowns for uh, uh, the Stallion, Josh Allen? Uh, let's take a little look. See seven. Okay, so I do believe that Moss will get the opportunities in that offense. One hundred and seventy carries is what I have him down for, which is not a not a ton. It could go higher than that. So there is the possibility, um, but that's uh, Moss thirty four, Hines thirty five. Dylan 46 right now. Um, but you can see all of our rankings for those three guys on the website. One more. Oh, I guess we don't have another voicemail. Let's go to Instagram. Is Brandon Cooks a draft value? Very little competition in that wide receiver room. This is from Tracy Skiles on Instagram. I think he is. And I, I so I started the offseason. If you've been with us the entire time, um, once we finished our rankings, I was – Really upset with how high Brandon Cooks was in my rankings because he's on a terrible offense with an unknown quarterback situation. And, you know, I, I, I didn't like that. I moved him down. And since then, he's kind of meandered his way between the two spots. But in reality, he is the only wide receiver of note there. He is an actual good wide receiver. Yes. He gets open. He gets targets. He gets long touchdowns. He's done it for... Everyone he's ever played for, and he's played for a lot of different quarterbacks, although they've all been like, I don't know, Hall of Fame level well, quarterbacks, not Brady not, and Breeze. And, not Jared Garf. That's true. But that's true. What Jared, it's, but Jared Goff, that's, that's what it comes down to. What are the Houston Texans doing at the quarterback position? Out of camp right now. Praying. <laughs> out of camp right now, It they are preparing for Tyrod Taylor to be the starter. Deshaun Watson, when he, he showed up so he didn't, didn't get fined, but they're using him just like as a a bit player out there. They're like they're setting him up at safety now. He has a he's not in camp now though. He has an injury, uh, which wink. Yeah, that that really feels like one of those injuries that's super minor. But they're the, the player is taking it as an excuse to be out there. On top of that, Watson has declared uh, on top of all the 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 twenty two accusations that Watson is dealing with. Before that, he had already told the team he doesn't want to be there, and he's saying he will not play for the Houston Texans. Yeah, that's, and what, that's what the injury is. That, so it's his ego. It's To me, it's Tyrod Taylor. 
And can Tyron Taylor sustain Brandon Cooks at any level of fantasy value? That's where it becomes really well, questionable. Let me for let me. me give you the guys he's going around and see if we think that he is more of a value in that range. Because right now he's being drafted at the eight ten, so almost the ninth yes. round. Wide receiver forty. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that's very late. He, the guys right next to him are Jarvis Landry and Jalen Waddle. So if you've okay. got to pick between Brandon Cooks, Jarvis Landry, and Jalen Waddle, who are you taking? I'll take Brandon. Cooks. I'll take Brandon Cooks. I will as well. Would you rather have Brandon Cooks or? or your pick of the litter of Baltimore wide receivers? I would rather have Brandon Cooks. Oh, man. I think it's going to get messy. Unless you're unless I can have, no, Mark, can't Andrews. have Mark Andrews. No, you can have Mark Andrews. Okay, then, then yeah. Well, the latest report, Marquise Brown, uh, wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, the presumed number one, he had sustained an injury in training camp, and now he's they're saying he's going to be out at least for a little bit, and that kind of stoked the flames of – which wide receiver would step up? They just drafted a first-round wide receiver, Rashad Bateman, who out of Minnesota, who's a great player. Can he become the number one? See for that, that team, team? I don't think that team's ever looked at Hollywood as alpha one. If, does that make sense? They they may they've not. looked at him as great outside field stretching Correct. weapon. Yeah, and he's always been that, and he'll always be that. So, like to me, there is still room for Sammy Watkins. Oh, gosh. Yes, that, that's, that was the name I was going to go to, is do you take Sammy Watkins or do you take Brandon Cooks? <laughs> Actually, that's not an answer. I'll take Brandon Cooks. Yeah, I'll take Brandon Cooks as well. All right, before we get to more questions, I want to thank today's sponsors, Indochino, longtime sponsor of the show and an awesome company. If you are in the market for good-looking tailored suits, in fact, ever since I got my Indochino, every time I'm watching anything on TV and I see someone in a suit, I'm like, that's not tailored. Like, it, you know, bunches right. in the wrong yeah, spots. Yeah. It just the, You look. did put Devin Booker on blast for not yeah. having a tailored he suit. He looked stupid, and he's, he's a, I mean, he's a handsome fellow, but he looked dumb in that suit. <laughs> he needs to go to Indochino. <laughs> I literally just ordered a couple weeks ago two tailored shirts, not just suits. You can get shirts. You can get pants. Once you go in and get measured, it's so easy to get have perfectly tailored clothing Really nice suits as that start as cheap as three hundred and ninety nine dollars. Oh man, what if Completely. Jonathan Taylor got tailored? Oh yeah. I'm oh. sure he I'm sure he's up on the tailoring. Oh. That's yeah. like in his lineage, yeah. I would imagine. So <laughs> Look, you can have it completely customized, every detail. They are fantastic. You want an Indochino suit. And right now they're open at select Nord Nordstrom stores. Uh so look. If you want a great fitting and personalized suit, go to your find your nearest location at Indochino.com and you can get fifty dollars off a purchase of three ninety nine or more using the code Footballers at checkout. That's fifty dollars off a purchase of three ninety nine or more at Indochino.com promo code Footballers. Also, guys, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. It's summer again. Oh, I oh. know it. I know um, it. Things we're are, unfortunately aware. Things are kind of hot. Uh, nights, very uh, hot. nights are very hot and it's hard to get sleep when you're in some hot sheets. That is true. Enter Brook linen, crisp sheets that breathe and keep you cool. I have a great testimony. Like we all have brick Brooklyn linen sheets, right? Um, and I've, we've been sleeping on them, but then right. like we left town and some people house sat for us. And so we swapped this, the sheets out and then, yeah, you're not sharing that. And then they washed the other sheets uh -huh. that we want and put them back on the bed. Oh, so then when we were really tired, we went idiots, <laughs> we went and slept on the not Brooklyn and sheets. Oh. And I, like genuinely that it only happened once. Like I was like, that's never happening again. We put them right back on. Uh, look, they are just, there's a difference in the way you sleep and the Brooklyn and sheets are incredible. Um, they have something for every comfort need. So, you know, ideal for a seasonal refresh because they're, launching new products and colors and patterns, and they're buttery soft, and it's great. Give yourself the uh, comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at Brooklinen. Go to brooklinen.com and use the promo code FANTASY to get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code FANTASY for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com, promo code FANTASY. All right, let's... Turn the page here. Ooh. Got some Travis Kelsey questions. Zeus conundrums. Instagram question from Bozer119. For real, though, who are you taking before Travis Kelsey in the first round? 
the people need to know. So I'm taking true three down running backs. So let me let me go through them. Let's go. Let's do it. McCaffrey. Yes. Cook. Yes. Camara. Yes. Henry. Yes. Mixon. No. Elliott. Yes. Jones. Yes. Barkley. Yes. <sighs> I. Oh gosh. I think he'll get off to a slow start, but I'm still. Yeah. I'm still taking. He, yeah, it's probably worth it. His upside is higher. Chubb. Man. No. <laughs> The, the Saquon Barkley and Nick Chubb line is so difficult for me. Of uh, Nick Chubb not being a, a true three-down running back, but what my belief in the Cleveland Browns is for this year, and uh, the the newly wealthy man, uh, Nick Chubb. I think he's going to All have that a, coin's going to weigh him down, Mike. Ooh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. They it, make you carry it has, is, on the field. Is that part of his contract? It is. That he's just going to have, like, the giant bag of gold coins. It's in his pocket. It's really big pocket. It's just it's the spin two it's really spilling out as mm -hmm. he runs. Yeah. That's oh man, run behind him. Imagine that. Like he'll never get tackled. It's true. They'll be if, picking if it up. If you have huh? gold coins piling out of your pockets. Oh yeah. If They're I'm not a, paying attention. If I'm to... a defender, if I'm a safety, you're he, not he, right. He's, he's going to look up. like Jason leaving a buffet <laughs> oh, out there yeah. on the field, waddling down the field. See, so, so you got to line your pockets with the plastic bags. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take it home. Uh, Jonathan Taylor? No. All right. Austin Eckler? No. No. Okay. So I think you, we found you're, our you're spot. You're kind of maybe seven, eight, nine. Are you taking any of the wide receivers? Devonta Adams, Tyreek no, Hill? I am not. I go back and forth on that. Right now, I'm a not. <laughs> okay. As in, you're taking Kelsey? Correct. All right. Um, which was the next question was, are you taking wide receivers before him? Um, how about this one? Just to... Put a ball on the Kelsey discussion. Is it a reach to grab him in a half PPR at number four? I guess you'd say yes. A, a little bit. I mean, we're just but giving fine. the like, – Yeah, you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. We're just – we're giving the advice of how we play. It is – it's still your team, and you should make the decision that you think is the best for your fantasy team and your, your best shot at winning a championship. And Travis Kelsey is a – like, how, did, how does Travis Kelsey – not live up to expectations for he fantasy football. He gets hurt. The That's other, it. the other players, you know, things can change. A scheme can change for uh, Saquon Barkley could get thrown to a lot less. Uh, Al Alvin Kamara, the Kenny offense, Gallagher. and I know Andy, you don't want to bet against Kamara, and, and I don't either. But maybe the offense is just really bad, and he's getting a bunch of volume, but he's not getting any level of touchdowns. Things can go wrong for the other players, the running backs, that are not injury-related, where I think there's nothing outside of injury that can stop Travis Kelsey. And if you're just joining us for the first time, like now in August, coming back, getting ready for your redraft leagues, like we've talked a lot about this over the offseason, but the headline here is that we've been very comfortable taking Kelsey in the first round. Yeah. Uh, because of what he represents from a very high-floor perspective, any player can get injured, so you kind of throw that out. And, and truthfully, that's almost like the injury discussion Kelsey has proven to be a very durable player over a long period of time. So yes. don't it, you say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm talking about his brother, Jason. Oh, Kelsey. good. Yeah, yeah. Jason Kelsey, model of health. Uh, <laughs> not sure that's true. But uh, yeah, we're all very comfortable taking Kelsey in the first round, which is not something we've said in years before necessarily. But uh, it's a wonderful thing having him on your roster and having that weekly advantage at tight end. I love this question. It speaks to the things that fantasy players are facing in this fine month of draft prep. Instagram question from Belmont Drew. Can I draft Austin Eckler at seven? Can I? He wants permission or someone to blame. You are both allowed, and I don't think that that is a terrible spot to draft him, especially if you are in a PPR league. Austin Eckler could catch 100 passes this year. His offense projects to be great. His offensive line went from one of the worst to possibly one of the best. I absolutely love Austin Eckler. He's always been great for fantasy. He does a lot when he touches the ball. He does not project to have a lot of touchdowns. That's never been his thing, but he's been a top 12 guy plenty of you know times and stretches without getting in the end zone. So I am 100% fine taking Eckler that high if, if that's the guy that you are targeting you know, that you want. Yeah, there are. It's just interesting when people, when you discuss the chalk of the first round, right? Yeah. The players that are supposed to be there. Like uh -huh. I read somebody, it was on Reddit. They were breaking down like this whole, why on earth is Saquon Barkley and Ezekiel Elliott 
always ahead of Aaron Jones. Like Aaron Jones has outperformed them with efficiency, like even with less carries for multiple years. And, you know, Saquon's got all these question marks and Zeke's had his yards per carry go down three straight years. And, and well, it's because his ADP is lower. I mean, <laughs> that's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like Aaron Jones, Aaron Austin jo Eckler, like these players, when they're on the field, this is what I said yesterday, where it's like a player can come out and have a great second half of the year as a rookie in the year at running back 25, but he was the running back six during the back half of the year and distort everything. Like, just be willing to, in this range, go with your gut. Don't have regrets as a fantasy player. Don't go with someone else because of a list. Right. Because we have a list. If you have a conviction about a player that's in that realm, mm -hmm. in that tier, or close to it. In fact, I'm seeing that Austin Eckler is actually my running back eight. There you so, go. So he is not available for you to. That would be idiotic to take him at seven because he is oh, lower okay. in my list than that. And Aaron, I'm with you. Aaron Jones is uh, dis, disrespected for fantasy purposes. I mean, he was. He was doubted, I think rightfully doubted last year due to how the, the points came and the uh, uh, two years ago when it was like he was either winning you a week or he was losing you a week single-handedly. So I think that the doubt last year was an okay thing to, to, to the, uh, be skeptical of him, but I think that that needs to go away. Like the way you feel about Alvin Kamara of like, it's stupid to bet against yeah. Alvin Kamara. I think it is stupid to bet against Aaron Jones. And they're a very good comparison, those two players, because of their efficiency and their the fact that they are like they're legitimately the best athlete on the field when they're out on the field. So um I think that there are just things there are like five check boxes of comfort for running backs for fantasy players. Right. And so certain players check all those boxes and certain players are missing one or two. Like for Aaron Jones, it's three hundred carry potential or something. So he doesn't have that checkbox, so the comfort level goes down, yet he produces every year. Yeah. And, and Eckler's in that category, too, where, okay, can he be a three-down back? Right, and then you have Derrick Henry, who checks a bunch of boxes, but he doesn't check the huge one of, of pass catching. He he's a, he's a grinder, and, I mean, it's weird to bet against Derrick Henry, but what if the Titans' offense, what if it falls off this year? They lost their offensive coordinator, their, their – Gonna, you know, try and keep a similar system, but it's still a new human in control of of dialing in the plays. It, like things can go wrong. I agree. I agree. Um, anything to add, Jason? No, I, I, I think it's. Anything I think to that take this away? is an important. I think it's a lot. There's a lot to take away. It's an important way to look at the first round and make your own decisions based on the information you're getting. How we view the first round is mission critical the the you know that's where obviously the the guys that are going to win you the most leagues are are found those those centerpieces and so making sure you're not just doing what solely what a list says to do but you've got your rationale as to why you believe what you what you're doing there I think it'll make you a better fantasy football player that's the goal right here give you the opinions and you make your decisions uh brian from facebook says in a redraft half point league would it be okay to have both zeke and cd lamb on the same team yes yeah i i i agree i think in a redraft league um you cap a little bit of your upside right they cannot have a touchdown on the same play uh outside of wackiness um in a best ball league i you know unless you're doing a super stack with the quarterback as well i probably wouldn't because you know in a in a redraft league consistency and just winning a one on one matchup is what you're after every single week and having both the running and rushing attack from a fantastic offense will really provide you some some consistency. It's interesting because that question comes up a ton during this month every sure. year, where like people they want to know if it's okay to have two players on the same team. Yeah, especially a, a running back and a wide receiver. Like Jason said, you you do limit your upside because they can't both score a touchdown at the exact same time, but they are they project to be a very high-scoring offense. They're in a division where the only defense that I'm truly worried about is Washington. Now, I know that the, the Giants' secondary is uh, probably a little bit underrated, uh, but two games against the Giants, two games against the Eagles, I mean, that's... It, and the, the the defense for Dallas, I don't think that they're going to 
completely turn things around from what they had last year, so they should have to be a more high-powered offense to win games. Twitter question from Sabian Wendell. I'm not sure who to take with the third overall pick. Kamara scares me because of Taysom Hill not giving him targets. And Zeke at three is a bit of a reach, I feel. Maybe it's Derrick Henry. Uh, I read this one in part because I just want to reiterate what I said about Kamara before. I am like Alvin Kamara can be the number one running back in football this season. And I don't think players should doubt him. I read nothing, almost nothing at all into the Taysom Hill sample size of those games last year. Uh, they started figuring it out. Kamara is too valuable of a weapon. And I'm telling you guys, they have nobody. I mean, right now, I mean, I don't think this wasn't in the news, right? The Traquan Smith. Do we have an update on that situation? Because yesterday during the day, someone said mm -hmm. he got hurt. I don't think we have an update yet. Brooks, so, find one. So, yeah, see if you know. Brooks, feel free to chime in if we're, you find out the status of Traquan. Were either of you guys called in for a workout? I was. Yeah, I got I'd a phone. Too. Yeah, yeah. Wait, voicemail. what? Sorry, I'm sorry Mike. Mike. You're not the athlete here. You did break um, your thumb when I threw you a pass in flag football. <laughs> that's, that's only because you hit me right in the hands. Right. That's true. My that's, bad. That Whose was fault his, is that? My bad. That was on Andy for yeah. sure. Um, you needed Mitch Trubisky in that situation. <laughs> when you say that Alvin Kamara can easily be the running back one, I think it's important to remember he was the running back one last year, and <laughs> he had Drew Brees gone for part of that, and he lost Michael Thomas for half of that this year. This is what I'm saying. Not only that, remember, like, remember last year's Drew Brees. Yeah, like there was he was criticized almost every single week. People watching him going, "What is what's up with Drew Brees? Why won't he drive the ball down the field?" It this wasn't the that was not the elite version of Drew Brees last year. It so I mean Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston can give you very close to the the level of production. Yeah, and Alvin Kamara. I mean, just just look at the game log last year. Like if you have the if you have the UDK. And you can see the consistency charts. I mean, it's mind blowing how good Alvin Kamara was, despite the ups, downs, quarterback changes. And then you go, oh well, let's just flip over to his career. Well, he's never not finished as a, a running back one. Two years ago, it might have been three years ago. I don't know with the COVID year in there. Time right is a construct. Um, <laughs> I remember being a little bit down on Alvin Kamara because some of the metrics about his efficiency made you question whether he could reproduce that. And then in week one, quarter one, NFL action starts, and I just immediately – I was like, I am an idiot. This dude <laughs> is untackleable. He's just so smart and shifty and good. We haven't seen anything on film to say that he's lost – an ounce of that yet and the nice thing is with these efficient runners versus these 370 carry backs they can hold up a little bit longer they can be uh, you know shifty and and uh, quick and still have their legs about them uh, at this point in into their career early in their second contract Traquan Smith not present at practice today left with an unspecified injury yesterday uh Oh my goodness, Deontay Harris also not at practice today, which yeah, was that's why we got the call. Um, yeah, that's the voice. I got a voicemail. I didn't answer. Mm. I screened Mr. Payton. Mine was through my agent. You oh, must okay. not have an agent. I do not. Uh, eighty-one, 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 eighty-three. The four years. Of Jason, you're never gonna believe this. We finally got our first call. <laughs> I know you've employed me for ten years. Oh my! Now's goodness. my time, man. Yeah. Uh, the round mound of touchdown. Mm, that's what they call me. Uh, Facebook question is Michael Carter a value in the eighth round. Hey, what's a, let's do a temperature check on Michael Carter, rookie running back, New York jets. Talked about him quite a bit this off season. He's a popular sleeper candidate in some circles. Where are you at with him right now? So I, I feel like I'm at about the same spot. I was coming into the season. I like him. I think he is a talented running back, and he landed in a good spot where I believe he becomes the one. Now, it will be a timeshare. They're not. This is yes, not a workhorse running back. So you're talking about a guy who will be splitting some time, even if he's the first man up. He can't catch the ball, but he's not a supreme athlete. I think his quickness, his shiftiness is great. His long speed is uh, a little bit lacking. Um, and when you look at an offense that projects to – not well, it projects to be bottom eight, sure. Let's say, um, confidently. If you're a bottom eight offense with a split backfield, 
You don't have the long speed for the 80-yard touchdowns. He's a guy that I think will be usable in a flex, but he's not someone that I see as a uh, a high probability of really being that breakout rookie running back just because of the the team and the offense and the rookie quarterback and the situation around him. All right. Great question here from Instagram. Does Baker Mayfield have a chance at becoming an efficient Ryan Tannehill-style quarterback for fantasy? Yes. Which, which would be touchdown efficiency. Yes, I, I believe he absolutely has it. Over the second half, we saw him uh, really starting to understand the playbook, and that was without Odell Beckham Jr. And the, the thoughts on Odell Beckham Jr., The I say the public opinion, while it is – it is sour for fantasy football. I still think that Odell Beckham is a good player. Jarvis is very efficient. And then I don't know if you guys have seen the 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 it's it's training camp fluff. I get it, but Donovan Peoples Jones is really starting to draw a lot of uh, of of nice comments out of training camp. And you look back at what he, what Baker was able to do with Peoples Jones last year. Uh, I believe the stat was he had a near perfect passer rating when throwing at Peoples Jones. If you have him emerge as a true deep threat, Odell Beckham comes back and is you still got Mr. Is, Hooper, right? Yeah, Austin Hooper is there uh, as well in the middle of the field. So yes, I think that Baker Mayfield has the talent and the players around him to make that breakout jump. All right, before we shut things down today, tomorrow's episode is going to be a mock draft episode. But here's what I want to do, Brooksy. I want to throw a poll up today, mm. and I want to know if the people want us to draft together as one team because we do a lot of mock drafts that way, and we break down the picks. It gives us more time to talk strategy or go head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head again. Can we do that? And then we'll just go with whatever the people say. I mean, united we stand. We'll go with what the Peoples Jones say. All right? Sounds great. All right. We'll put that up on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Uh, one last reminder here before we close things down as well. If you're brand new to the show, uh, if you're looking for a resource, a tool, something that will help you get ready for your draft, uh, quickly download probably the last six months worth of strategy talk and personnel changes and free agency and all of our projections and rankings for every single player you want to check out the Ultimate Draft Kit. A lot of work goes into it. It's available on the web and in an app form. You get access to all of it at ultimatedraftkit.com. And uh, that that's our baby. We've worked on that for years and years, and it is a uh, well-received and proven resource to help you win your league. So uh, very, very excited about that this year. I think it's better than it's ever been. And so I look forward to continuing to update and improve that over the month of August. All right, that is it for today's episode. Like I said, mock draft coming tomorrow. Regardless of the format, it'll be a good time. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.